In this tutorial, we're going to move on to the third method uh, of design. And we're going to have a look at HTML editors. And the editor we're going to uh, focus on is one called Microsoft Expression. Um, so, you know, up until now, we've looked at the whole idea of HTML conversion programs. We've looked at text editors to create web pages. Now we're going to look at the third method, uh, HTML editors. We're going to spend the vast majority of the rest of the course dealing with um, HTML editors. And the reason we've dealt with text editors, and everybody will see this much later on in the course, when we need to um, be very specific about what we're trying to do within, um, within our editor, okay? As well as that, there will be other packages we will use to create add-ons and we'll need to be able to use the text editor part of this to be able to understand what part of the code we need to copy and where we need to put it within our own web page. So there are, it'll all come um, home to roost when we figure out exactly what we need to do later on when we uh, get to the add-on part of the, the proceedings. So what we're going to have a look at is we're going to introduce the HTML editor that we're going to deal with. And the one we're going to deal with is going to be Microsoft Expression Web. Now, the reason we're dealing with this is because uh, for starters, it's uh, a WYSIWYG editor, which is what you see is what you get. But also it's um, because it's from the Microsoft suite, we're well used to uh, Microsoft Office, etc. And we'll be, you know, the actual menu system, which you'll see up on top here, file, edit, view and so on will be very familiar to us. Um, and it's a mixture really of Word and PowerPoint put together. Um, and it's very simple to create uh, web pages. And uh, the third reason we're using it is it's free and it's freely available to all students to download it and to install it at home. So um, that's a, an added bonus. So therefore anybody can use it um, either in the college or at on their own PCs at home. OK, so I'm going to just jump into Microsoft Expression and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have a play around with it. OK, so it's going to size this up here. OK, what we have in front of us is a, I've just opened up Expression. It creates a brand new page here um, and you can see up on top we have the HTML view up here down below we have the actual design view. And this is really important because it, if I just look at the design view, it'll give me that. If I split the screen, it'll do that. If I look at the code, it'll just do that. So what I've got is when I go to split, I'll have HTML up here and I'll have the actual web page down here, okay? And as I said, it's a WYSIWYG. So what you see is what you get down here. So it's it works very similar to things like Word when I when I type in stuff here. So if I was to type in my name, sorry, typing into the wrong place, but if I was to type in my name down here, you will see that it also appears up here. Okay. Um, if I highlight it and put it in bold, you can see that it puts strong around it here, which we introduced is another way of putting bold on it. Center it here. Okay. Uh, which is PLI equals center. So all of these things here that we're used to doing are very similar to um, to, to Word, etc. cetera. Um, if I want to change the color of my font or the type of my font, I go in here. And again, I don't need to choose, um, you know, I don't need to go red, green, or blue. I can just go down and through here and I've got 16.7 million colors to choose from. OK, so if I choose something in here and I want to kind of go a dark or red, you know, I, I just choose that. You'll see that it'll give me a hashtag nine nine one 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 one. OK, and if I apply that to it, it'll make my text that color. So if I come along here, I can change it to anything I want to with regards to. Um, you know, if I wanted kind of a greeny color, I apply that and so on. OK, so. Um, you know, there's nothing new or difficult there. So bold, italics, underline, all of these ones here will go in there like that, okay? Um, left, center, right, okay, all of them will go in there like that. Going on to the other things we've looked at before, if 
I just pressed return there and you can see it automatically puts in P's for me. OK, so exactly the same as we, we dealt with when we were dealing with um, Notepad and so on. OK, if I wanted to just align this to the left and I'm going to create a list and just say I put in bread. OK, and I put in a bullet point like that. I can go butter milk. OK, and then press return twice. OK, and get out of that. Take off that there, actually. Now, as you can see here, these are just simple bullet points. If I highlight or click any part of this and right click it and go list properties, you'll see that it gives me option to take the bullet point off. You can see the circle, sorry, the disc, the circle and the square. OK, exactly the same as before. If I want to put in numbers, I can change them to numbers and go OK. All right. But on top of that, if I go list properties again, you see the exact same options I had before with regards to one, two, three, Roman numerals, um, capitals and smalls, and ABCs, capitals and smalls, okay? And you can also start at three or four or five, and that will change to starting four, five, six, and so on. So I can continue from a, a list I've already had or whatever, okay? Uh, other, and you can see definition list, ordered list, and unordered list. And these are the three that I said that are still being used, the menu list and the um, directory list are not are not there. And I said in most cases, people will stay away from definition lists and, and they will use tables, okay? Um, and then finally, I'm just gonna have a look at picture bullets. Now, I'm not gonna use these now, I will come back to them when we deal with images a little bit later on in the course, okay? But you see how simple that is and you see how connected that is to what we've learned in the um, in Notepad up to this point, okay? So what else have we got? We've learned how to put in, you know, these kind of things. If I wanted to put in insert HTML horizontal line, it'll put in a horizontal line like we had before, okay? If I double click on that, I can go with equals 50% if I wanted to put that in there. And height equals three or four, left, and then change the color. So all of these we've played around with, okay? So if I go, I can do that, okay? So um, obviously I can center it if I want to, and I can go back in and change the property. So if I don't want it to be green, I want it to be, you know, red, I can do that. And if I want it to be, you know, two pixels in height, I can do that and so on. So I can play around with it, I can make it wider, I can make it full width whatever I want, okay? So there are things that we've looked at before. What else do we need to look at? Well, um, if I come in here and right click my background, okay? Right click my page anywhere here and go page properties, you'll see this appearing. Now I'm gonna go in here into format and you can see background color and text, okay? So these are BG color and text, the attributes that we looked at when we were looking at um, um, the whole idea of of coloring your background and changing your font. So if I change my background color, I got I have a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen standard colors here. Okay, um, these are the ones that I'm using so far in the document. You can see the green, the red being used. If I go more colors, I have two hundred and fifty six colors available to me here. Okay, if I'm still not happy with this palette of colors here. I can then turn around and go custom, okay? And I have a grand total of 16.7 million colors in here. If I know the color I'm looking for, um, and I might've got it from something like, you know, Photoshop, I can put it in here as a hex, which is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, whatever, okay? So that's red, green, blue, okay? So it'll give you a number, you can put it in there, and it will pick the exact color. Or if you have a, a, an image in the corner here and you want to use your background color to tie in with your image, you can go select and you can choose any color that's available on the screen. So if I you know, hover over this blue color here, you'll see that it picks that blue color from there, okay? So my color picker, and you can see it appearing right in here under new. So if I wanted to pick the red color here, okay? I can I just go over, it looks very pink here, but anyway, and I go okay, and I go okay, and it changes that to that background color, okay? Now, 
that's awful as we can see but anyway that's neither here nor there okay so uh, I'm going to go back in here and go into page properties and go in here to format it's the same with my text and I can change more colors and choose whatever colors I want remember we're looking for contrasting colors things that you can that will become very apparent uh, and obvious and not difficult to to read and so on when you're dealing with something so if I highlight all of these and say I don't want the blue any or the green anymore I want it to be just black I apply that I have my black colors there the last thing I want to have a look at is the whole idea of of headings and so on okay uh, so in our case here I'm just going to put a heading here and I'm going to put in something like lists that we've dealt with before so again highlight that list I think underneath paragraph we'll see h1 right down to h6 so again these are the different size headings that I might have and I might go for heading 2 okay so it does that gives me a heading to list size I can center that or do whatever I want and then you know you, you can save that and play around with it okay so straight away there within a couple of minutes we've been playing around with um, with expression we've kind of done a lot of what we've done up until this point using um, the actual text editor um, but I don't want anyone to turn around and say oh well what do we bother spending uh, you know the last couple of hours dealing with uh, the text editor for believe me it'll be well worth it in the long run okay so all of those things whether you're putting in headlines whether you're putting in horizontal rules bold italics all of these things can be achieved through here and you can see how straightforward it is my advice would always be until we get very used to this to split the screen so at the bottom you'll see your design section here but at the top when you put something in here you can still see that you're dealing with um, like you know h2s and so on so you're getting used to maybe dealing with the actual html as well and um, there's a lot more things available to us and we'll, we'll, we'll use them over the next little while to start creating different aspects of, of a website and see how they all work together okay but that's a a, a gentle little introduction to um to our um expression and of course if we want to save this we go for save as and in my case here i'm going to save it into tutorials for web and i'm going to save it into web page and this one will automatically save it save as default i'm going to call this um tutorial 18 because that's what it is okay tutorial 18.html okay so i'm just going to save that now just to let everyone know how this also works i'll just bring that up there for a second i'm just going to go file open and while i'm at this i'm going to go into the exact same folder i was in a second ago which is tutorials and i'm going to open up there's a web page one in here as well i'm going to go in there and i'm going to go module test this is the actual web page i've been dealing with through all the other tutorials so far and because i've created it in um you can see all of these i've created it using my html edit sorry not my html editor through my text editor it doesn't mean i can't open it up in here and deal with it i can of course okay so um i'm just going to save that as i'm going to save this as tutorial 19 and the reason i'm doing this is because i'm going to use this as my starting point in my next tutorial okay so the nice thing about this is is that yes i can use this i've created a page using um my text editor but i can also edit it and change it without any bother in a html editor and vice versa i can go back and change it the other way around as well no bother whatsoever okay i'm going to go back to powerpoint and you can see that you can open up the page there and of course you can change the color of words of letters of paragraphs the whole lot we've done all of that there